In this session, we'll look at how to transfer parking lot striping from Civil 3D to InfraWorks 360. Now, I'm currently working in Civil 3D. On my screen, I've got a drawing that represents a proposed parking lot design. I'm going to zoom in and I'll hover over some of the parking stripes. When I do, you can see that this geometry was created using Autodesk vehicle tracking. To import this geometry into InfraWorks, I'm going to start by converting it into lines and arcs. We'll do that using an old school method. We're just going to explode the geometry. I'll do that by selecting one of these parking rows. I'll right click and I'll come down and choose Select Similar. When all the rows are selected, I'll come up and click the Explode button. Needless to say, when I'm finished exporting this geometry, I would quit this drawing without saving. Now that I've exploded the entities, I'm going to isolate them on screen. I'll do that by going to the Layers panel. I'll click the Layer Isolate button, and I'm going to select one of the stripes, one of the hatch objects, and I'll select this lane around the building, and I'll press Enter. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Now that I have the geometry isolated, I'm going to export it as a shape file. We'll do that using the command map export. I'm going to export this geometry into a folder called shape. We'll call the shape file parking striping, and I'll click OK. I'd like to export this geometry as lines. I will then come down and click the select objects button, and then I will window these objects, and I'll press enter. Since these objects have no underlying data, I'm not going to use the other tabs here. I'm simply going to come down and click OK. Once the geometry has been exported as a shape file, we will jump over to InfraWorks. Here in InfraWorks, we can see the parking lot model that I've created that I would like to receive these parking stripes. To import the stripes, I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer. I will then navigate into that shape file directory, and then I'll drag and drop the shape file into my model. From here, I'll tell InfraWorks what this data represents. In the Type menu, I'll choose Coverage Areas. Now, this may seem unusual because coverage areas are typically thought of as closed objects. Not a problem, these will work just fine. After I've chosen my type, I would typically select a style. Now, I'd like to create a custom style, so I'll leave this empty for right now, and then I'll come down and choose Close and Refresh. This imports the shapefile into the drawing. Now, it is there. If I kind of hover, you can see that highlighting on screen. Let's create a custom coverage style to apply to these stripes. We'll do that by opening the InfraWorks menu, and then in the Manage menu, I will choose Style Palette. On the Style Palette, I'll select the Coverage tab, and then I'll come down and click the green plus to create a new coverage style. This style is going to represent white paint, so for the Fill style, I'll click the Ellipsis button, and I will ensure this is set to white. Let's click OK. As far as the outline style, this is not necessary. I'll click the red X to remove this. As far as the outline width is concerned, this doesn't matter because I'm not using an outline style. When I'm finished creating the new style, I'll come down and click OK. I can then give the new style a name. I'll call this White Stripes, and I'll press Enter. Next, we'll assign this style to the parking stripes. I'll do that by going to the Data Sources tab. And here inside the Coverage Areas group, I'll see my parking striping. I'm going to right-click on this, and I'll choose Select Features. This will select the objects and display their properties. From here, I'll click on Rule Style, and then I'll click More Styles, and I'll choose the White Stripes Coverage Style we just made, and then I'll click OK. Now, we can't see anything just yet. That's because our parking stripes represent linear objects, and these coverage styles are kind of assuming a closed shape. Let's come down to the buffer area. From here, I'll click the pencil, and I'm going to add a buffer width of 0.1667. This will offset the linear objects two inches to the left and right, thus creating closed objects, and it'll give me nice four-inch wide white stripes. I'll press Enter. I will then move away, and I'll press Escape to deselect my shapefile. Let's zoom in, and if I orbit, you can see it is as if these stripes were painted on the asphalt. Now, I do have an issue here. You can see some of these closed shapes are filled. Let's fix that. We'll do that by coming back to the Parking Striping Shapefile. I'll right-click, and I'll choose Configure. In the Data Sources Configuration dialog box, we'll go to the Source tab. Notice right here, by default, it says to convert closed polylines to polygons. I don't want to do that. I'll remove the check. In doing so, it will treat all of the entities as linear objects. I will then choose Close and Refresh. There we go, that looks much better. I'm going to go ahead and close some of these pallets. We'll back up and orbit and take a look. And we can see that the parking striping looks very nice. At this point, you may be wondering how difficult it would be to update this geometry. Well, let's take a look. I'm going to jump back over to Civil 3D. Over here, we'll assume the proposed parking lot configuration has changed. We'll also assume that the vehicle tracking geometry has been exploded, much like what we're seeing here. I'm going to simulate that change. I'm going to use the copy command. 
and I will copy one of these handicap stalls. We'll copy it maybe from the end point here to the end point here, and I'll press escape. So for the sake of argument, we'll say this geometry represents my updated parking design. Let's re-export. I'll do that by right-clicking. I'll come down to Recent Input, and I'll choose Map Export. We'll overwrite the previous shape file. I'll click OK. I'd like to export this geometry as lines. I will then choose Select Objects. We'll window those objects, and I'll press Enter, and I'll click OK. Once the data has been exported, we'll jump back over to InfraWorks. Here in InfraWorks, I will return to the Data Sources palette. I will then right-click on the updated shape file and choose Refresh. At this point, I can see the updated design. That being said, the shapefile does include some additional entities. For that reason, we'll make sure that everybody's using the same style and buffer width. So we'll go back to the shapefile. I'll right-click. I'll choose Select Features. From here, I will select the white stripes style, and I will assign the 0.1667 buffer width. I will then move away. I'll press Escape to deselect the shapefile. We'll close up this palette, and we can see that we have very easily updated our parking lot striping. Now, I did this with parking lot stripes, but we don't have to stop there. This technique could also be used with much of your other site geometry. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.